Welcome to the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. My name is Dr. Jinong and I'm your host. I'm a cathartic release therapist, professionally trained as an osteopath, psychosomatic therapist, Western acupuncturist and herbalist. I'm fascinated by the mind-body connection and how your physical body is a manifestation of your emotional state. I help people get unstuck from their chronic pain, whether it be physical or emotional, and live the life they truly desire, grounded in values and driven by purpose. My aim is to create awareness to the underlying emotions behind pain, injury, and disease in the body, as well as behavioural dysfunctions and mental imbalances that present. I do this using a unique blend of Eastern and Western philosophies and a good dose of intuition. Join me to learn more about the story of your body, what different issues may indicate, how to release emotions so that you can prevent problems, as well as inspiring pain story interviews. This is a topic I've wanted to share with you now for a little while. However, it's only really just come together for me at this point in time. And it's something that I call emotional Botox. And I'm going to be focusing mainly on the face today, but I will delve into a few other areas. Most of you will know that people use Botox for cosmetic reasons. There are other reasons that people will use it, for example, to stop excessive sweating or to help relax the jaw muscles if they grind their teeth. But usually when you hear the word Botox, you think of people injecting their face to get rid of wrinkles like frown lines, crow's nest, downturned mouth, all this kind of stuff. And it's pretty common to do this in the Western world nowadays. So I wanted to dive into what I feel emotional Botox is because you know that I am a strong believer that your emotions get stored in your body and when it all gets a little bit too much, they will manifest in different ways and it can manifest on your face. So this might be you or you have a friend or a family member out there where you know that they have been through significant periods of stress in their life and their body and in particular their face will show it. So they have their divorce lines on their face, their grief lines or that time that they stayed in the job that they really hated and it really wore them down. Now, I'm not against Botox. I personally have not had it. However, I will never say never because it might be something that I consider in the future. And a lot of my podcasts lately, I have been doing video recordings and I do plan on putting them onto YouTube. So if you do want to watch this one, I am makeup free today so that you can see everything on my face. And hopefully I am an advocate for doing this emotional work because I do process my emotions on a very regular basis and I am not immune to stress or getting angry and all these kind of things. But I've been through a bit of a journey with my skin and I am very aware of where I hold tension in my body, including different areas of my face. I also don't have anything against people who might choose to go and get Botox or do certain cosmetic things to them. And I am going to cover that a little bit later in this podcast and also talk about the benefits of actually doing some cosmetic work on things like scars, acne scars and self-harm. So we're going to be covering quite a few things in this episode. So if we focus on the face, the face is really unique, as is the rest of the body. However, if you have learnt or studied with me or done courses with me, you'll hear me talk about certain Eastern philosophies. 
And I use a lot of work around the chakra system. Some people know these as energy centers, but basically there is a bit of structure to the body and the face, which divides it up into different chakras. And chakras is what I use to work out what emotions someone might be storing. So this is where I don't worry so much about what the disease state is or what the issue is. It's more about the location in the body that is affected and therefore that'll give me a little bit more insight as to what emotions this person might be suppressing. So it's really useful when somebody comes in with discomfort or they consult with me and they have this discomfort and they just can't make sense of it. And using the chakra system, I can bring awareness to perhaps what emotions and what scenarios and events in their life might have occurred and therefore what emotions are stored in their body and therefore why it's manifesting in this way. Now, on the face, your whole body and all of your chakras are represented on your face. So it's now if you watch the video, it's like the head of the person is in the middle of the forehead and their arms are outstretching over the eyebrows and then the body goes down the nose and then the knees kind of bend out along the lines of the mouth and then the feet come down to the chin. So don't worry if you don't understand this because I'm going to just break up the face into its different sections in a minute. but. There are primary areas for the chakra in the body and then there are also secondary areas on the hands, the feet and the face. So let me talk a little bit about some of the chakras on the face and if you have been part of the release course, there is an amazing psychosomatic face reader who came in and did a guest talk for us talking about psychosomatic face reading. So basically she just looks at someone's face and can tell their whole story just from their face. Now, her name is Melanie Medegs, and I have done a pain story interview with the lovely Melanie Medegs. So if you go through and look that up, we do talk about how fascinating reading the face is. So I'll go through the main areas, but the base chakra is around the chin area. And so the base chakra governs emotions around sense of survival and basic needs. So this is food, shelter, warmth, water, and finances to a degree. So how stable and how secure do you feel and how solid are your foundations and how supported do you feel? So you might just want to focus on your chin now and think, do you hold tension here? Does your skin break out in this area? Do you get itchy? Do you get a rash? Or is your skin a little bit more red? Now, I know that I used to hold a lot of tension in my chin. Now, I think if I continue to do this, I would probably have a lot of dimples and wrinkles around my chin. And I first became aware of it when I was learning Vipassana meditation, where all you get to focus on is sensation in your body. And I was like, gosh, why do I keep on holding so much tension in my chin? And I just had to be very conscious of it. And I feel like overall in my body, I am quite aware. And as I said, quite aware of where I hold tension and very quick to pick up on it and therefore relax it. And that includes my face. So the base chakra area is around the chin and it governs emotions around basic needs and sense of survival. And then if we move to the sacral chakra, which is the lips and the upper lip area, I've worked with some interesting people that have issues with their skin on their upper lip area. And it tells me a lot about what emotions they might be storing. So sacral chakra is fascinating. It comes up a lot. And the sacral chakra governs emotions around relationships in life and also sexuality and sensuality. So when we talk about relationships in life, we're talking about parents, grandparents, extended family, siblings. It can be your past relationships, your current relationships, the cheating and the affairs that you might have experienced, or you might have been the person that did this. 
It also has to do with fertility. And a big thing that I talk about around fertility and some important events to process are things like miscarriages that don't get talked about a lot very openly and also abortions. And it can also then go into your relationship with kids. And the sacral chakra, as I mentioned earlier, also has to do with sexuality, sensuality, sex drive, and has this relationship with money and power as well. So anything around the sacral chakra, any issues, you might hold it in the secondary area in the face. So it might be in the lips or in the upper lip area. Some people can break out and have problems with um, rashes in this area as well. So you're thinking of skin quality. You might also be thinking of where you're holding wrinkles and tension in your face because wrinkles are usually of expression lines. But when we see people, we can sometimes tell when they're the stressed and sad wrinkles as well. And this probably comes into why possibly as we dive into plastic surgery and people doing things to their face and their body, maybe that's the reason why women nowadays want to have more pouty lips because when we do change our physical body, our emotional state changes. But likewise, my big focus is is that when you've got an emotional state that's stored in your body, your physical body is going to manifest it as well. So we're just focusing on physical manifestation in this podcast because I do talk about mental behavioral type manifestations as well, but it's kind of separate. So sacral chakra is the upper lip. And then if you go to the nose, the nose is your solar plexus. And this is about identity. So immediately you could just think about different people's noses out there, how strong they are, how small they are, how flat, how pointy, how crooked they might be as well. But your nose is your solar plexus and it governs emotions around identity, confidence, self-esteem, self-expression, power, ego and authority. Then if we move up to, well, actually, if I go back to the nose, some issues that you might have are things like sinus problems. You might be someone that picks or scratches your nose or rubs it all the time. Again, you might have a really red nose. You might get those pimples up your nose that are really painful. Now, if we move up to the next chakra, so I'll go through all seven of them, the heart. So the heart covers the whole eye region, including the eyeballs. <laughs> so this can be thing like things like itchy, irritated eyes. It can be the styes that you get on your eyes. It can be the swelling or the twitch that you get on one side of your eye as well. So the heart chakra governs emotions around love, conditional, unconditional love, acceptance, gratitude, connection. And then I often like to talk about the negative emotions, which are normal emotions around resentment, hatred, injustice, um, those kind of feelings, betrayal, jealousy. Those are a couple of other ones that come up. Now, I will do a separate podcast at some point in time talking about each of the chakras. I could probably do an episode on each of the chakras themselves, um, but we do dive into it in depth in the release course. So then going up to the brow, no, the throat chakra, the throat chakra, the throat chakra is kind of across the brow line. And now this is another interesting area because a lot of women are getting their eyebrows microbladed. They're getting them made thicker, closer together. And if you think of the throat chakra crossing over the brow area, Eyebrows are really about communication and the throat chakra is about speaking up, having a choice, voicing your opinion, speaking up for yourself. So good eyebrows, good communication. And yeah, you know, if you have lost your eyebrows, you might just feel a bit odd because um, you're used to obviously having eyebrows, but also think about how different it feels when you might get them tattooed on or when you draw them on. And 
how we present ourselves to the world physically can affect how we communicate and how we feel emotionally. So then the brow chakra is in this little kind of in between uh, the brow area. Now, I I don't often go too in-depth into the brow or the crown chakra. Most people have got their issues around the base, the sacral and the solar plexus. But if you think of this area, this is often where people will have some deep furrows in between their brow. And it can be because they're intensely concentrating. It can be because they're stressed. So the brow chakra is about insight, intuition, and also houses knowledge. Now, I remember when I was young, I remember seeing this girl at the bus stop every time we would drive past on a regular basis and how I thought, oh, she looks really great because she was always frowning. For some reason, I I thought that this was a really good facial expression. Maybe she just looked intensely focused all the time. And so I remember actually consciously trying to frown all the time when I was younger. Now, this is something that I try not to do nowadays. Then if we move up to the crown chakra, which is all of the scalp and a little bit of that forehead area, crown chakra is really about that higher connection to the universe, to spirit, all these kind of things. So it just takes a lot more exploring and explanation around these. So I tend to keep the brow and the crown chakra a little bit separate. So now you can see how the whole body and the whole range of emotions can be stored in the face. And the face is one of those secondary areas where things can manifest. And as I shared with you, the lovely Melanie, who's a psychosomatic face reader, can pretty much tell people's story just from their face. And this is actually something my husband does pretty well as well, because we both uh, almost, almost 10 years ago now both did the psychosomatic training course. However, I was a lot more kinesthetic at the time, feeling people's bodies and looking at the rest of the body, whereas he was pretty good at just looking at the face. So just know that when you are interacting with people and you have that first impression of them and you see their face, your your brain, your mind, your body is already sort of calculating and working things out. So people can have certain expression lines that will remind you of someone that maybe you haven't had a great interaction with. And this can cause you to get triggered because it's not about the person, but just this memory inside of you that gets triggered. What else is there? That's also why I feel I prefer that if ever there are kind of conversations, which are hard conversations to have, I always prefer to have it where I can see the person's face. So we know how text messages and emails can get completely taken out of context because we have different ways of communicating with one another, but also there's no tone to it. We think that people are yelling at us when they write in capital letters, but they're not. (laughs) Maybe they don't know how to turn them off. But if I ever have to have a hard conversation with someone, I would always prefer to have it in person or I do love online and at the moment with some restrictions, it's not that easy to go and see people, is that I would love to get them on a Zoom or a FaceTime or a WhatsApp so that I can interact with them. And this way, I also feel that it's much easier to stay present. You can't really multitask. People can tell that you're not listening. But it's much easier to have these face-to-face conversations with people. It is also the reason why people won't have a face-to-face conversation. They can get a little bit more bold and brash when they hide behind a computer screen or a text message. But you can't hide the emotion when someone is speaking. So if that's a tip. If you have to have a hard conversation with people, it is much easier and it's often better for you energetically because you can start to misinterpret a lot of things when you are just reading something or someone's tone isn't quite right. Okay. Oh gosh, I've got so many ideas that come to my head. I don't script out my podcast anymore. (laughs) I've found that I can talk for a really long time to myself, but I always prefer talking to people. But this is another thing. um, If we think of the face, I think movie directors are really amazing in how they portray characters. 
And I will often watch movies and think about all this deeper emotional and energetic work that I do and think, gosh, that's really clever that they put that nose on that person or they made their eyebrows this angle and really bushy. And, yeah, we've all seen like the backstage scenes of how they, you know, craft up people's faces and make them look a different way. And I always think of um, James Bond the James Bond movie, I don't know which one it was, but there's the actor, I think his name is Yavia Bardem, and he's also in Eat, Pray, Love, but he's kind of like the really attractive guy in Eat, Pray, Love. Um, and in the James Bond movie, he's like this villain and his teeth come out. He's just really ugly and you don't like him. But this is the same person, but they just make them look different just by tweaking a few facial features. So movie directors are really clever in how they portray different people um, and really take into account the energy and the emotion that we might feel around different features and how people look. So I'll move into the, you know, why you might want to consider Botox or plastic surgery, although before you go and do these things, I always want you to think about your reasons and emotionally why you feel like you want to do something. So this is the same reason of why you might choose to have an elective surgery or want to remove something or, you know, get a mole taken off in a different part of your body, you know, a cosmetic mole, not one that's actually got some issues with it. Um, because, yes, we hold tension in our body and in our face. And I know like my, I've got Asian background, Asian genes, and a lot of people will say, well, Asians just don't age that much. And yeah, maybe that is part of it. But I have been doing a lot of this work and I have also seen people's face change over a very short period of time. So again, if you've done like my six-week course or you've been on a 12-week um, one-to-one journey with me or even longer, I get people to take their selfie before they start delving into this work. So take a snap, share it with the group or just keep it to yourself. And then after six weeks, 12 weeks, make sure you take another snap and compare it. And it is so surprising. Your face can change actually. It's changing every single day. It can change in a week, but I've definitely seen and other people have witnessed in my groups the huge change that people can have in their face. Even their eyes can look more open or less red or just not holding so much tension in their frown lines or just the fact that they can smile with teeth and before they didn't want to show their teeth. And the face can just balance out so much more and just have this softness. Even the skin can have uh, a different sense of clarity to it. It might not be as red or as blotchy or, you know, even the skin might break out, but then it settles down a lot quicker. So I encourage that if ever you're going to go on a big emotional journey that you take a snapshot whether it be a positive one or a negative one, if you can bring yourself to, but take a snapshot of yourself, take a selfie, even every week and just document how your body changes and how your face changes in response to your environment. So this is where the emotional Botox part comes in. I am a huge advocate for processing your emotions so that you don't store them in your body and in the case of the face, that you don't store these emotions in your body and therefore the tension, the wrinkles and all that kind of stuff because there's a big difference between stress lines and happy lines. So let me go back to say you've been through a stressful period and, again, many of you, either yourself or you will know someone out there who has been through an incredibly incredibly stressful period of time and their face has changed and if it's not the greatest experience with the stress <laughs> uh, stress can be good but yeah if you're going through like a really messy divorce or you've just you know had family feuds with grief posts uh, when someone you've lost someone in the family 
all these kind of stresses, they can really wear the whole body down, but it can really show in the face. Now, this is where some people might like to improve their appearance and they might choose to get the Botox to get rid of these lines because physical physical appearance or physical postures or how you hold your face can affect your emotions. And likewise, it's often easier if you can deal with this earlier and learn how to process your emotions, you might be able to prevent your face holding this tension or these lines. So I do believe there are benefits to changing things, but you just don't want to do it with a lack of awareness. And this is where I think you can see people go over the top and it's like, oh my gosh, they look worse than what they did if their lips were just the normal size or if they had these wrinkles on their face. But with anything, people can just go a little bit too far. And that's when I think you can tell that people haven't really dealt with the emotion. It's easier to inject the face or take a pill or go and do this thing. So softening lines on the face can definitely help someone feel a little bit different. And that's why I think we should reserve judgment of people who might do this and why I don't actually think it is a bad thing for people to do this for themselves. And it might make a little bit more sense when I go into talking about things like scars and I'm going to talk about self-harm scars and also acne type scars. But say you've gone through a messy divorce or you just had a really horrible few years and you felt all of that stress in your face, you might look in the mirror every single day. And even though you've done the inner deeper work and you're ready to move forwards, you might just be constantly reminded of that period of time when you look at your face. And this is where When you go and change the physical, you can start to feel different on the emotional level. However, just like I say, people might need the medication in crisis point. Don't take that as in this is going to fix it. You might change your appearance, but still do the deeper work because physical affects emotions and emotions affect physical. And maybe you won't have to get repeat Botox if you just keep on doing the emotional work. That's why I call it emotional Botox. Uh, Another thing would be like people changing their nose. And you might be someone who's had plastic surgery in your nose to change the shape. Remember, solar plexus is about identity, confidence, self-esteem. And some people will embrace that big nose, that crooked nose, And other people may have been bullied for it. And so there's a lot of emotional scars there and they decide that they want to change. And it's really interesting because when I was in clinic, I would often be very curious. And even now, you know, in my day when I meet people who have done things to their body, so like breast implants or nose jobs or pinning their ears, I'm always really curious about, oh, okay, you know, what are the reasons? Because there is no judgment. I'm just curious. What sort of emotional state were you in that led you to want to do these things? And breast implants are a really common thing where people will get them. And then many years later, they decide to take them. um, They decide to take them out. So I think it's always interesting to look back at why did I make this decision? what was going on and what did I think was going to change by me changing this in my body? Because if I use some other examples, say someone going in for knee surgery after they have had multiple knee accidents, then they go and get the surgery and then the surgery fails or they go and get another one and then they get an infection and then they get complications. This is the kind of stuff that I work with elsewhere in the body when the body doesn't respond to all of the best care, rehab, and even surgery, that tells me that something emotional is going on and that's what needs to be cleared for these things to take hold. Now, you may or may not resonate with this, but I have come across many people like this. So, yeah, even when you go and try and maybe enhance your lips or have plastic surgery to some part of your face, but you're still feeling 
that something's not quite right and then you go and think, okay, well, I need to change this and I then I'll feel better. That's usually a sign that you need to work on the emotional stuff. And it's much harder than paying someone money to go and do something for you. So tune into, okay, well, what is the reason why I wanted to change this body part? And some people definitely embrace it and they're quite comfortable talking about it, but I've just had some really interesting conversations with people. Now, if we get into scars, and now this can be scars anywhere in the body. Um, Now, for example, there's quite a few people who they've had um, bites, like a dog bite to their face, and they've got that scar, that memory, and they might want to get rid of it. And so they might get plastic surgery done. They might get injectables done to change that appearance because that may have been a very traumatic experience for them and they've got this constant reminder. If I talk about acne scars, particularly cystic acne, now some of you know that my pain story, the thing that manifests in my body when things are out of balance is um, pimples and acne and I once at the peak of of my journey (laughs) about, I can't even remember, it was eight or nine years ago now, Uh, I had terrible cystic acne and thankfully I think I do have just some tiny scars but they don't bother me but I don't have some of the big pitted scars that I can see on people. Now again there are some people who have got these scars they embrace them and they're absolutely fine Um, but this again can be a reminder of a time when you didn't feel so good about yourself and it's like gosh you just wanted the acne to be gone but now you're left with the scars from the acne. So there are actually lots of things like sometimes beauty therapists out there can do do stuff for your face to help with the scars, but also the people who do the injectables and all sorts of fancy stuff out there can actually help improve the appearance of scars. Now, some people will think that this is incredibly vain, but I definitely have felt and experienced the psychological issues that come with having bad skin. And so yeah, I really empathize for people who may want to change this appearance. And it is something that I used to talk to people in the clinic. Obviously, they weren't coming to see me for their skin, but I would mention to them, hey, you know, just letting you know that there are um, people like either a beauty therapist or um, these doctors or nurses who do the injectable stuff that you could consult with if you wanted to try and improve the appearance of it of these scars, but if you're fine, it's okay. So another example of where all of this stuff is really great that it's available is if you think of self-harm scars. So these are just other analogies to try and um, try and get you to understand where I'm coming from. Now, I'm just moving away from the face, but self-harm scars, for example, people cutting themselves and they might be left with keloid scars, which are those really lumpy scars and they might be red, they might be white, but they're quite raised. And so again, you can imagine that someone who um, does something like to them, this to themselves, something is going on emotionally and it could have been in a period of time of their life. And now many years on, they've moved on, they've had some work done, they've done the deeper work, they understand and they've cleared that, yet they will look at these scars and they will be reminded of this time. Again, some people are okay and they'll embrace it, but there is amazing cosmetic stuff that people choose to do that they can also do to help um, change the appearance of these scars. So again, you can look at these scars and have a physical reaction to it and an emotional reaction. And again, if you think if these scars weren't here, if you could do something about them, then that stops the cycle of this physical trigger and this emotional reaction. So it's not to say that you just can get rid of these scars and all of a sudden all the emotions gone. You still need to work on both. But physical body will influence the emotional body and the emotions that you store in your body are going to affect your physical body for some people and then it can manifest mentally or behaviourally as well. And you can think of just exercising, how much better some of you will feel when you exercise. 
Some of you have experienced gaining weight and losing weight and how that makes you feel completely different on the inside and on an emotional level. And so the face, again, all of the chakras are represented in the face. Your face represents your whole body and can tell a story. So before you reach for injectables or you're doing this already, I want to bring you back to tuning into and being aware of events and life experience and traumas that you might have experienced and the emotions that are associated with these and how you may have stored these in your body. And I want you to know that there are ways, there are many ways that you can process your emotions, but this is the work that I love to do. And I'm not going to dive into how you process emotions because this is a big topic but I just want to create awareness around this using this topic of Botox and emotional Botox, that once you learn to process emotions from past events, it's not over because we are always encountering new circumstances, new challenges in life, and they're all going to be associated with emotions as well. So this is all about improving your emotional metabolism and having the ability to process your emotions and not store them in your body and therefore have them manifest in a negative way. So hopefully I've inspired you to have a little bit more awareness around your face and where you might be holding tension and that you can just relax that, relax your chin, relax your mouth, relax your teeth, your eyebrows, your forehead, and just check in with yourself if you're going through a particularly stressful time. Knowing that your physical body can influence your emotions is can you take the stress and tension out of your face? Can you relax it and just check in with your face on a regular basis so that you can feel different on an emotional level? Because a lot of the time the challenges and the stresses that we encounter they're only for a finite period of time. I know sometimes they can feel like they go on forever, but you weren't brought into this life only to experience challenges. And emotional processing also helps you helps you present yourself in a way that you can be really proud of, of how you conduct yourself through experiencing these challenges in life. So do some emotional Botox on yourself and if you have any questions, reach out and I hope to see you on some free masterclasses which I am looking to start up again where you can just interact with me on Zoom live. It's my favourite thing to do to actually talk to people and not to myself Um, but you will hear more on my social media and I will probably announce it on the podcast as well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for learning with me on the Art of Listening to Body podcast. If you like what you've heard, I would love if you could rate, review and share with your friends. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is the Art of Listening to Your Body. If you're interested in working with me, I offer online courses for the general public and trainings for practitioners, therapists, and coaches. I also open limited one-to-one coaching spaces throughout the year. If you would like to find out more, head to my website, drjinong.com.